We have a speaker today who happens to be from this area. And uh, I would venture to say that almost everybody in the nation knows her. Um, and the great part, and the, the interesting part is that, that there's a lot of people that know her and maybe don't even know that there really is an Auntie Anne. But we've got her right here. And I think that is wonderful. Uh, she's agreed to be with us. Uh, and, and for those, I know you've got some background, and I don't want to, to, to blow her horn or toot her horn for her, but uh, we're just proud to have uh, the, the, the founder of Auntie Anne's Pretzels, Ann Byler. Ann? Thank you. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, the home of the Amish <laughs> and Auntie Anne's soft pretzels. How's that? While I am delighted to be here, and I want to thank uh, Charlie and Joe. Thank you for making me feel right at home. We had some conversation, and uh, appreciate this opportunity to be at this this very exciting event. And we have a packed out house on a beautiful day like today. If I were you, I'd be out walking or something like, at what, 3.30 in the afternoon, you're here in this, well, it, this is a beautiful facility, so it's all right, but thank you for coming today, and I know that you're looking forward to a great event here uh, with, uh, let me see, the title is Going on Faith, uh, this conference, and uh, I love the title, love the theme, and I can certainly relate to Going on Faith because I've been on that journey myself. So again, thank you for being in the house today, and um, I hope that you will feel encouraged in some way by my story. I always say when I speak, I want to share my story for God's glory. So I'm not going to lecture you. How's that? You may, you may get some of that this weekend, but I'm not one of those. All right? I'm just a storyteller. And... Um, I love sharing my story because it's really amazing to me. So I'm hoping it's amazing to you. And uh, when you leave here today, you'll be encouraged in some way in your faith walk that all of us are in. I brought my book along today. It's called Twist of Faith. And uh, how appropriate is that, huh? Twist of Faith. And... Um, well, it actually has to do with the pretzel, because, you know, there's a twist in every pretzel. <laughs> I didn't title it for this conference, all right? Um, so I'm going to be in the back after I'm through, and we'll do some book signing. If anybody would like to take a book along, I'll sign it for you. And the books are $14, so if you're interested. I can tell you in the next 20 minutes, I will not be able to tell you all the details, which that would probably bore you. Uh, but there'll be a few more details of what I'm able to talk about in this book if you want to know more uh, than what I'm sharing with you today. Wow, once again, you, you are a lovely group, and I was telling my sister, somebody back there sounds like life. Everybody's just chit-chatting. Sounds like you're happy uh, to be here and to be together uh, to share ideas and thoughts and connections. It's a great opportunity for you uh, to be in this environment. So... I uh, hope that your whole conference is very successful and everybody feels like it was well worth the trip for them. I understand that most of you are volunteers. Is that right? I'm wondering where you were when I was doing the business. <laughs> like, I could have used some volunteers. But God bless you. That's amazing. There's something very, very unique and very special about volunteers. And you're in that group. So God bless you all for doing what you're doing. Thank you for this opportunity to share just a snippet, just a very small piece of my personal and my business journey with you today. I want to share with you in the next 15 minutes one of the lessons that I learned as the founder and CEO of Auntie Anne's Soft Pretzels. How many of you in the room have ever, well, maybe I should start by saying, how many of you have never had an Auntie Anne soft pretzel. You can be bold and raise your hand. Whoa! Wow! Oh my goodness, where do you live? <laughs> Obviously you don't live in the malls. Because we're in 46 states and in 26 countries around the world. So 
That's what I'm saying. Where do you live? <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Maybe after today you'll go out and find you a pretzel somewhere. What I want to share with you today about is the power of purpose. But a little bit about my history. I was born a little Amish girl in, on an Amish farm here in Lancaster County. I was one of eight children, like the old-fashioned way. We had one mom and one dad. <laughs> was it a perfect life? No. Was it a good life? Yes. As a child, I grew up in a very secure and a loving uh, home. There were five boys and three girls. We were raised to love God and to love each other. My mom reminded me every day we were not allowed to fight or be angry with each other. <laughs> no small feat for my mom, but let me tell you something. She just passed away about a year ago at 92, and I never one time heard my mother raise her voice. Wow. Yeah. It's a challenge to me, for sure. I knew at an early age, growing up in that environment, that I wanted to please God and please my parents. I didn't understand, as a little girl, that God really had a purpose for me that was more than just being a little Amish girl. But I did have a very real sense that I wanted to serve him, and I wanted to please him. So faith has always been a big part of my upbringing. Mom and Dad taught us many things on the farm that I would take with me as an entrepreneur. How many entrepreneurs do we have here? I know you're volunteers, but there's got to be entrepreneurial spirits in this volunteer group. And, um, but mom and dad taught me many things on the farm that I would take with me, two of them being, in particular, working really hard and persevering. One of the greatest lessons I learned was perseverance. I did a lot of things as a little girl that I didn't feel like doing. <laughs> All right? I just didn't feel like it. But I persevered. I learned that. And perseverance really set me up for my future as Auntie Anne's. Now, those of you in the room today that understand entrepreneurship, you know that an entrepreneur is someone who will work 16 hours a day for himself to avoid working eight hours a day for someone else. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. You know what I'm talking about. I'm saying that a successful entrepreneur is someone who will do what others simply don't feel like doing. You've got to push through it. You've got to persevere. If you're going to do it and do it well, you have to do what you don't feel like doing. The farm is also where I learned and developed the love for baking. At the age of 12, I would make 60 or more pies on a Thursday night that were good enough for my mom and dad to sell at the farmer's market in Philadelphia. At the ripe old age of 19, I married a tall, dark, and handsome, hardworking Amish guy. I should have brought a picture. <laughs> and together, the two of us set out to fulfill our dreams, which were pretty small at that time. If you grew up in the Amish culture, you're, basic, you're basically growing up to have your own family someday. Well, I, fit, I felt like I hit the jackpot the day I married Jonas Byler. I have to say that after 45 years, wow of being married to this man. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you, when you read my book, you'll know who the hero is in our marriage. It's not me. I can tell you, after 45 years of being married to this man, he's not quite as tall as he was. <laughs> His dark hair is more gray than dark, but he's still very, very handsome. And I still believe that I hit the jackpot the day that I married Jonas Byler. A good man is worth a lot. <laughs> Those of us who have had the privilege and the blessing of a good man understand what I mean by that. We were young, we were innocent, and filled with love for each other and for God. 
I was living my dream. I was the happiest girl in the whole USA. I had my very own little family. It's all I ever wanted in life. In a few short years, six years after we were married, our dreams were broken. Our little girl, Angela, was killed uh, when she was 19 months old in a tragic farm accident. This experience, along with the abuse of my pastor at that time, uh, took me into a world of depression, a place that I had never been to in my whole life. It was dark, darkness like I'd never experienced, and a marriage who over time just simply existed. A faith that I questioned, and where was God? A far cry from where I started in life. I lived in this dark place for many years and thought that life was over for me. I'm standing here today in this place in front of you because of the power of grace and one good man. Today I have the privilege of walking with the two men who saved my life. Hmm, this is supposed to be a business uh, weekend here and I'm just getting all teared up, I'm not sure. Uh, but Jesus was the power of grace and Jonas was the one good man. Instead of fighting them, now I'm loving them and we're walking together. I didn't know until years later after all of our pain that out of our pain our purpose was being formed and that through all of our tragedy, Jonas and I would begin to put our marriage back together. And we did that with the help of God, faith, and marriage counseling. And at that time, my husband decided to go into marriage counseling and do it as a free service in our community. That meant just one thing for me, I would have to go to work. Yeah, because I was a say to mom. I went to work to make the dough. <laughs> yeah, the pretzel dough, that's it. To support my husband's vision and our family. My decision to go to work was not based on a, a financial, um, I'm sorry, it was, not, it was not based on a great business plan that we put together. But it was simply based on a financial need that we had. Auntie Anne's became the financial vehicle that supported my husband's vision. And I have to tell you that Auntie Anne's is simply a modern day business miracle. It should never have happened, according to the educators. I knew nothing, zero, about business, but I was about to find out as I began my journey with Auntie Anne's. But what I did know is that we had a purpose. We knew that we had a purpose from day one. Our purpose was to help others and to give back in many ways. Purpose with passion is dangerous. <laughs> I'm telling you, purpose mixed with passion is dangerous. You will get somewhere in life with that combination. Purpose is defined as the object toward which one strives to intend a resolve to perform or accomplish a result that is desired, determination or resolution. The most important revelation I believe that you will ever have in your lifetime is to find your purpose and then set out to fulfill it. The three things I didn't have when we started Auntie Anne's was formal education, <coughs> capital, and a business plan you know they're pretty important, <laughs> right? As the company grew, I began to realize that three things that I didn't have, I should have had. And I began to feel intimidated as I made my rounds in the real business world. Everybody that I met had a formal education. Everyone I met knew more about business than I did. It was during that time in my life that God took me to a verse in Psalm 32, verse 8. And he said to me, Anne, I will instruct you and I will teach you in the way that you should go. And I will counsel you with my eye. So what I did was I read books and I went to seminars and 
went to conferences, and I became comfortable in my own skin. And over time, I became confident in my role as the CEO and founder of an international franchise company. Oh, I remember that like it was yesterday. I decided when God gave me that verse that I'm going to stop whining about what I didn't have and I was going to start focusing on what I have. Listen, we all have more than we think we do. But you got to know what you have. What do you have? Stop whining, please. How many of us like to be with whiners? Oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> I mean, you hear it on the news, on the radio, in the newspapers. You read, it's, it's very annoying. I decided I would focus on the things that I have, which were, I call them the three small Ps. A great purpose, a great product, and great people. I did not build Auntie Anne's by myself. No, it took great people around me every single day. Over time, I knew that if I did the three small Ps well, that I would realize the capital P, which is profit. Purpose will impact everything that you do. And I became obsessed with my purpose. I discovered three things about purpose. Purpose will give you power to overcome any obstacle in your way. Mm, I wish I could get into that a little further, but I can't. Purpose will give you a passion that is unbelievable. And purpose will give you a position of influence. Hey, listen, people, this is my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I'm just telling you what happened for me. But I hope that in some way, you'll get just a little snippet and say, you know what? I need to find my purpose. Number one, overcoming power. What I mean by that, the power to stay when I wanted to run. We started Auntie Anne's in 1988 with a $6,000 loan from my father-in-law. We bought our first market stand in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. Had no plans except one store. By 1992, we were opening our 100th location. The growth was fast and very, very intense for this little Amish girl, for this little stay-at-home mom. Let me tell you, it was intense. 1995, we opened our first international store in Jakarta, Indonesia. If you know anything geographically, you'll figure it out. That's like halfway around the world. <laughs> our first international location. People have asked me, why? And I said, well, my simple answer to that is, I guess I figured if we can do business halfway around the world, anything closer it would be easier. <laughs> and I can tell you there were times I wanted to run because the business was exploding. Auntie Anne stretched me to the point of personal, professional, and spiritual exhaustion. What I learned early on as the founder and the CEO of a fast-growing organization was that if we were going to grow as an organization and if we were to fulfill our purpose, then I, Ann Byler, would have to grow personally. I've discovered that you cannot grow professionally if you do not grow personally. Overcoming myself and overcoming obstacles was a daily occurrence for me. I had to become more than I was if I was to fulfill the purpose and the path that I was on, the power to stay when I wanted to run. Number two, purpose will give you an unbelievable passion. I became passionate about our employees and our product. If you ask employees, uh, during my tenure at Auntie Anne's, they will say amen to both of those. I became passionate about my people and my product. I just couldn't help myself. These people that came to work every day were not just my employees. 
They were people that I loved and I cared about deeply. Each Monday morning, I would make my rounds to see all of them and talk to them. Read a book long after that called Lincoln on Leadership. Abe Lincoln was dubbed with an MBWA. That sounds pretty impressive. I don't even have that. MBWA simply stands for manage by walking around. I said, hmm, I can relate to that. I wanted to be with my people. And there were many days when I felt like I didn't accomplish a thing because I loved my people. They're the ones who built the company. I didn't know it then, but I know now that if you care for the people that you work with, if you own a company and you care about your people, They'll be loyal to your purpose. Purpose. Passion for your people. Number three, purpose will give you an influential position. When I started Auntie Anne's, I was surprised at how business was being done. Where was integrity? I came from the Amish background where a handshake or being a person of your word or just simply paying your bills on time was really important. I knew that Auntie Anne's had to be the kind of company that was honoring to God. I wanted to be a light in the business world, so I took my position of influence to introduce the concept of light to my employees, franchisees, and vendors around the world. We did an acrostic with the word light. L, lead by example. I, invest in employees. G, give freely. H, honor God. T, treat all business contacts with respect. Pretty lofty, pretty lofty. But we did all that we could to live up to that on a daily basis. Light became the grid that we looked through when making decisions on a daily basis. Today, Auntie Anne's is in 45 states and in 26 countries. I never would have imagined that Auntie Anne's would go around the world. Hey, people, it was just a pretzel and a glass of lemonade. That's what we started with. Today, thousands of lives are influenced every day because of Auntie Anne's. They have provided a better quality of life for people all around the world. Auntie Anne's has become a multi-million dollar company. When we sold the company in 05, Jonas Nabili Community Center. It's called the Family Center of Gap. If you want to know more about that, just get on the website. The Family Center of Gap, and that will tell you what we do. Our purpose continues to this day. While living my purpose, I felt and feel a great sense of responsibility. And at the same time, I feel great joy and fulfillment. On my journey, I kept going back to the promise that God gave to me in the beginning of Auntie Anne's. I will instruct you and I will teach you. It just doesn't get any better than that, people. (laughs) It doesn't get any better than that. I can tell you that God not only taught me and instructed me, but he walked with me every step of the way. He was faithful to his promise. He helped me to stay on the path of my purpose. Without purpose, I would have absolutely given up and Auntie Anne's may not exist today. <laughs> can you imagine a world without Auntie Anne's? <laughs> well, for those of you who've never had a pretzel, you can, actually. <laughs> In closing, what is your purpose? It doesn't have to be grand or glorious, but do you know what it is? Does it include caring for other people? Obviously, you're volunteers. I think I'm talking to a room full of experts in the field of caring for others. I know that today's business climate looks quite different than it did in 1988 when we started the company. I know the economy has changed. And yes, I know we are living in very, very challenging times. But I want to tell you, purpose is timeless. And I can tell you from experience that purpose will, in fact, give you overcoming power unbelievable passion 
influential position. Simply stated, purpose gives you a reason to live. In closing, Mother Teresa once said, you don't have to be famous to be effective. You just have to be faithful. Find your purpose. Be faithful to it. And you will be effective. Thank you so much. God bless you.